Hello everyone, uh, welcome to today's lecture of machine learning and deep learning fundamentals and application. In this lecture, they, this would be a continuation of uh, the problem solving session uh, as we did in the previous class. So here also we will be looking into few numericals related to different concepts of machine learning. So without delay, let us start the class. So the first question is, uh, there are 18 points in an axial plane such that this set of points belongs to class 1 and this set of points belongs to class 2 and also there is another set of points given by this which belongs to class 3. Now there is a new point P which is equal to 4.2 and 1.8 and it is introduced into this plane. Now we have to find out to which class does this point P belongs to. Now we are going to use KNN technique with K equal to 5. So how to solve this problem? So first we have to find uh, Euclidean distance between the point P and the other points. So that is this Euclidean distance between point P and the other points. So the Euclidean distance is given by Euclidean distance is given by D x comma y so x and y are the points and it is equal to square root of x1 minus y1 whole square plus x2 minus y2 whole square so this is the formula so now let's consider this one to be the x1 point x2 x3 x4, x5, x6, x7, x8, x9, x10, x11, x12, x13, x14, x15, x16, x17 and finally x18. So okay, so now we have the points now. So now let us find the Euclidean distance between the point P and x1 first, alright. So it is given by D of x1 comma P which is equal to square root of 0.8 minus 4.2 whole square plus 0.8 minus 1.8 whole square. So if we calculate this we will get the value of 3.54 all right so similarly let's find the distance between the other points and um, that is x22 x18 and p so let's move on to the next page so now let's write the distance first here x1 and p so it is 3.54 so this we have already calculated so similarly we can write for other points as well so d x2 comma p it would be 3.32 so this i have already calculated if you use the same formula you will get the same result x3 comma p that is equal to 3.16 d x4 comma p is equal to 3.45 
and d x 18 comma p is equal to 1.12 so we have calculated the equilibrium distance of each point from x1 to x18 and p now since k is equal to 5 which is already given in the equation so we find the nearest neighbors to p so nearest neighbors to p r so we will find those uh, points which has the least distance so least five distance would be considered so if we look at this so the first or the lowest or the least uh, distance is going to be this one point eight two. if you look at this distances this is the least value and second we have this point all right and third is this similarly um, the fourth point is going to be this one and finally the fifth point is going to be this one so we can write the nearest neighbors are x 17 in ascending order x8 x11 x16 and x7 and if we see the classes so the classes of these points are 3 2 2 3 and 2 all right so now when we do the voting so if we do the voting here so we get three points belong to class two and two points belongs to class three. So according to the majority voting, we can conclude that the point the point P belongs to class 2 so this is the solution all right so let's move on to the next uh, problem so this problem is consider the data points given by this set and find out the principal component for this set of points and plot it on a graph so this is going to be our second uh, problem so let's write down the given data points the data points are given as two one so we are just writing in the vector form uh, three five four three five six and 6 7 right now we find the mean of these points so the mean is given by I mean, mean mu is equal to 4 4.4 4. right now let's calculate calculate x i minus mu okay for i equals to 1 to 5 5 because there are 5 points all right so okay so if we do this we will get this result minus 2 point sorry minus 2 minus 3.4 when we do uh, the subtraction of mean from 2 comma 1 we get this result and similarly for other points we get minus 1 0 0.6 0 minus 1.4 1 1.6 1 2 
2.6. Now, since we are done calculating x i minus mu, let us find out calculate x i minus mu x i minus mu transpose all right. So, for the first point we can write minus 2 minus 3.4 minus 2 minus 3.4. So, this is equal to 4 6.8 6.8 11.56 so this part is simply x1 minus mu and x1 minus mu transpose all right so similarly uh, if we do this multiplication we get the following results so the first the first point we have i'm just writing it again 6.8, 6.8, right? For the second point, we have 1, 0, minus 0 0.6, minus 0 0.6, 0 0.36. For the third point, we have 0, 0, 0, 1.96. One, one point six, one point six, two point five six, and finally we have four, five point two, five point two, six point seven six. All right. Now from this we can calculate the covariance matrix. So the covariance matrix is given by equal to 1 by 5 because there are 5 um, points to summation i goes from 1 to 5 x i minus mu x i minus mu transpose so we have already calculated this part now we just have to add all those matrices and divide it by 5. So, the result comes out to be 5, 2.6, 2.6, 4 4.64. Alright. So, now this is going to be transformation matrix for us. Now, we calculate the eigenvalues. So, eigenvalues are calculated uh, using this equation that is a x equal to lambda x all right so the a value we have already calculated which is the transformation matrix so we can write 5 2.6 2.6 4.64 x equal to lambda x now we already know determinant of a minus lambda i is equal to 0 all right so this gives 5 minus lambda 2.6 2.6 4.64 minus lambda is equal to 0 which implies lambda square minus 9.64 lambda plus 16.44 so this is the quadrating equation that we get now solving this equation solving say 1 solving equation 1 we get lambda 1 is equal to 7.42 and lambda 2 is equal to 2.21 all right now since lambda 1 is greater than lambda 2 we will calculate the uh, eigenvector for lambda 1 all right since we are uh, uh, more interested in the principal component 
all right thus we can write 5 minus 7.42 2.6 2.6 4.64 x1 x2 is equal to 0 so this is for lambda 1 all right so this gives the following set of equation so minus 2.42 x1 plus 2.6 x2 which is equal to 0 all right and 2.6 x1 minus 2.7 x2 is equal to 0 all right we have this set of linear equations now its augmented matrix is given by augmented matrix is given by minus 2.4 2.42 2 2.6 2.6 and minus 2.78 0 0 all right so we are uh, using the gaussian elimination method here to obtain the uh, eigen vector so using gaussian elimination method all right so we also uh, know this by a uh, rule reduction method okay so now doing this operation r2 plus 1.07 multiplied by r1 and replace the r2 row so this gives us minus 2.42 2.6 0 0 so we arrive at this now in linear system it is represented as minus 2.42 x1 plus 2.6 x2 equal to 0 all right now from this we will get x1 is equal to 2.6 divided by 2.42 x2 which is equal to 1.07 x2 all right so therefore the eigen vector or say the principal component is 1.071 one. all right so this is the answer now let's see how it would look in a graph so we are also asked here in the question to plot a graph right so this can be done this way so the principal component can be drawn as so let me draw a rough graph here One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and let me draw here as well. All right. So uh, the points are two, one, right? So two, one, three, five, somewhere around here. Four, three let's approximately consider this is the point 5 6 6 7 all right 
so we have the points here so let's um, uh, consider a point 1.071 which is the principal vector so for that we plot the point 1.07 and 1 so that would be somewhere around this point all right so now we just draw a straight line joining the points 00 and 1.071 1. so this would be approximately this one all right so this is going to be the principal component for our problem all right so we have obtained the result here so let's move on to the next problem so the next problem is use LDA for two classes C1 and C2 to cluster into two groups so C1 and C2 are given by um, this matrices and the new transformation point will be so we have to find out the new transformation point for this case we find the mean of this one and this one so it will be given by mu1 is equal to 3 3.6 and similarly we will obtain the mean for the second class as well so it is given by 4.67 and 2 all right now we need to find the scatter matrices so scatter matrices given by SI are SI equal to summation X belongs to C1 and C2 so there are two classes that's why X belongs to C1 and C2 and X minus mu I X minus mu2 transpose so now if I include something like 1 by n here, so it would become uh, covariance matrix. But that is not required for LDA. So we would uh, stick to uh, scatter matrices. Alright. So let's calculate uh, S1 here. So S1 is calculated like this. 1, 2, minus 3.36. So here we are just simply doing this x minus mu i multiplied by x minus mu 2 transpose. So this is similar to this operation and we would be adding that value for other points as well. So that would be 2, 3 minus 3, 3.6. Alright. So let's do for the other cases as well. And finally, we have 5, 5, minus 3, 3.6, whole square. All right. So like this, we calculate uh, the S1. So when we add it up, we get the result 10, 8, 8, 7.2. All right. And similarly, for S2, we get 5.33116 all right now we know within class scatter matrix sw is given by s1 plus s2 all right so what we will do we will simply add this two this one and this one all right so we get sw equal to 15.33993.20 all right now we calculate the between class scatter matrix between class scatter 
matrix given by S B, which is equal to mu one minus mu two, mu one minus mu two transpose. All right. So we get S B is equal to three, three point six minus. Four point six seven two and three three point six minus four point six seven two transpose. All right. So if we do this calculation, we will get this between class scatter matrix S two point seven nine minus two point six seven. Two point six seven and two point five six. All right. So we have these values. After this, we know W, which would be the transformation point, is given by S W inverse mu i minus mu two. All right. So we need to find. The inverse of this matrix. Inverse we have to find out. Inverse. So how we do that? So this is a two by two matrix, right? So we will just find the determinant of this matrix like this. Fifteen point three three into thirteen point two zero. Minus eighty one, all right. So eighty one is nine times nine, all right. And we will just interchange this part, all right. To so interchange this, we get three point two zero, fifteen point three three, and simply include a negative here and here. So this would result in the inverse of S. W. All right. So and we have one point six seven and one point six. So that is mu i minus mu two. All right. So now, after we solve this, we get S W inverse as zero point one zero nine minus zero point zero seven four. Minus zero point zero seven four and zero point one two six. All right. And after that, I have one point six seven, one point six. So if we do the calculations, we arrive at this minus zero point three and minus. I'm uh, sorry, zero point three two six. So this is the transformation point that we need. All right. Okay. Now coming to the fourth question. So it is given as in the third iteration of Adabus, the weight assigned to a misclassified data point is 0.4. Uh, if the initial weight for all data points is one, what is the misclassification rate of this data point at the end of the second iteration? So we uh, write uh, what we already know. So we know that d t plus one n is equal to d t. N exponential alpha t for mis classification. And this is already taught to you, right? Where alpha t is equal to half ln one minus epsilon. Divided by epsilon t. All right. Let's consider this as equation one. All right. Now, according to the equation, we have this expression as point four is equal to one exponential alpha t, and from this we can obtain the alpha t as.
0.4 all right now uh, substituting uh, this alpha d substituting alpha t in equation 1 uh, we get natural logarithm 0.4 is equal to half of ln 1 minus epsilon t divided by epsilon t all right so this is equal to minus 1.832 equal to ln 1 minus epsilon t by epsilon t and this is equal to 0.16 to epsilon t by epsilon t which gives epsilon t is equal to 0 0.862 equal to which gives 86.2 percent in this class we saw uh, the numerical solutions to four different machine learning concepts so first we saw a problem related to knn then we had pca after that we saw lda and then we uh, finally did a uh, numerical problem on Arabus. So I hope this uh, helps you to understand or get an idea how to solve the numerical problems related to, to these uh, four machine learning concepts. And I hope you will explore other numerical solutions as well so that you get a better understanding of the concepts. So with this note, uh, I would conclude today's lecture. Thank you and have a great day.